everyone. Welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is August the 10th, day 222. Is it, are y'all into numbers? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it makes you feel like we're doing something. Yeah, when well, we're getting moving along, 222. Yeah, we're um, about, what, that's almost two-thirds of the way through? Mm. Yeah. We're getting there. Hey, that's good. Jeremiah 10 is where we're going to be today. And... It says in Jeremiah 10, Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. Their gods are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak and they cannot be carried because they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of such gods for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. He begins here by saying, um, do not act like other nations and then he says one of the things that those nations do who try to read their future in the stars. We so desperately want to emulate other people and we want to force people into emulating us. The church environment I grew up in was very, if we can make everybody look alike, act alike, smell alike, dress alike, then we must be alike which was flawed, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I understand some of it, but it was flawed. Um, but now we have what I see as the opposite um, mm -hmm. problem with social media. You know, even when we've been to Argentina uh, and taught, and they have a program there, I've done the same thing in Peru, but the the gist of it, or the one of the things they're trying to tell their churches is, there has been a time when Argentines looked like Argentinians. There has been a time when Peruvians looked like Peruvians. But now, with Instagram and Facebook, Snapchat, you know, media everywhere, they see what everybody else is wearing, what everybody else is doing, and so they want to look like, act like, dress like what everybody else is dressing like. And so people begin to look more alike than they ever have before. You know, I, I've I travel the world and. I can get out and go places and I can, it's hard to distinguish between who's a local and who's not based on how they're dressed. And so the, the question I have is what in us drives us to want to emulate other people? There's some need or desire within us to be accepted. Uh, I think you can see it early on in life when kids go to school. You know, if if they don't have the the, the type of clothing or even the shoes types Ooh. of shoes, you know that everybody else has, they feel like that they're missing out on something, or they don't want. And to. they're often shamed. Absolutely, yeah. Or they don't, they don't want to stand out for that very reason because they they very well may be shamed for it, and so they want to fit in. You know, it's the same with hairstyles. Um, oftentimes, uh, music. You know, we've mentioned social media. There are a lot of commonalities that people seem to want to fit into to be like everybody else. And yet, there's often talk about uniqueness, uh, you know, but yet it, it's, it's hard to be unique when you're just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sure. what's your thoughts? Why do we want to be like everybody else? Well, in the way that he described, um, you know, kids getting singled out for things. I think part of it in human nature is probably safety because they want to be part of the herd, not one of the ones on the outside of the herd. Yeah, don't want to be picked on. Mm -hmm. Don't want to be the last one eaten or the first one eaten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, it's the easiest to spot with children because children are less subtle, much more vocal often mean it is just as prevalent though among adults but it's not as vocal you know they're not they don't shame their neighbor because they don't look like or dress like or didn't you know drive a new car or whatever they don't you know uh, 
they may not exclude them. They may know how to keep their mouth shut, but they have their opinion, you know, about the situation. And I, I see adults, you know, I, I've laughingly told the story about a family that I knew. If one of them did something, there were seven or eight brothers or sisters, I don't recall. If one of them did something, you could be they sure in the next 12 months, every one of the other ones were going to do the same thing. I watched it with cars. Mm -hmm. I watched them build houses. They were uh, There was a construction boom in the town where my dad pastored, just from this one family. family. Yeah, because in a period of three years, they all built brand new houses. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, uh, I want to be like you. I want to have what you've got. I want to do what you say. And I, you, you, used, you, you said you used music. Uh, as one, I read an article in Forbes about the impact um, that hip hop music has financially on the world. That when they mention something in a song, a style in a song, or they mention doing something in a song, how that it drives can people and trace the increase that, right. mm -hmm. to the to the, that that yeah. song. And so I, there is just that it is safety. It is, I want to fit in, you know, I want to be one of the crowd. And if we're not careful in the church, we will find ourselves wanting to fit in and not please God. You know, that's a that's an easy trap to fall into. Yeah, and, and I think part of the, the test or the temptation to fit in, particularly in relates to the church, you know, in our world today with, with the culture, um, there is some hesitancy to stand out even for what the truth of the word of God is because you don't want to be labeled, you don't want to be singled out, you don't want to be made fun of um, and it is very easy just to not stand for what is truth and right and we see it throughout scripture repeatedly over and over again but it never ends well um, so yeah when verse 5 tells he says their gods are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. I don't know that I ever recall reading the word cucumber mm -hmm. in Scripture. I know it's in there, but it, you, you just don't think about it, right? Do y'all think yeah, about it? No, I, I, you know, I think it has, depends on the translation too, but yeah, I, I can only think of one other place where it may be mentioned right off the top of my head. It says they can't speak. They need to be carried away and walk. The... The funny part was verse 4 where it says they fasten it with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. But he says, do not be afraid of such gods. They can neither harm you, so they can't do you bad, and they can't do you any good. Why are we so afraid of things that can't really do us? They can't harm us, but we're afraid of. Like What's an example? people's opinion, mm -hmm. you know, um, that that would be one. You know, what are, what are people? What do people think of me? You know, you know. Recently, some uh, and it's, this will happen occasionally. Someone will say, "Do you know what so and so said about you?" No, and I don't really care, and I don't mean to be flippant mm -hmm. about it, but they're not going to harm me or help me. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're so far removed from the situation that if they need to stand over there and have that opinion and say it, if my wife speaks up, that's different. She can both help me and harm me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I do think we, we fear um, things that neither can harm us or help us. Yeah, and it goes back to, to this opening here where you want to act like others. You want to fit in. You don't You don't want to be different than it. So somebody's opinion uh, would draw a distinction between maybe who you think you are or what you feel. But if you're secure, then it, it's not nearly as impactful. But if you're insecure, what they think or say may very well cause you to do things you wouldn't otherwise do just to yeah. fit in. Mm -hmm. Dangerously, very yes, yes, very much so. We see that a lot in in society today, particularly with young people. You know. Well, you know the the, the thing I would say. Well, let's because you since you deal with children, you might can address this. So there is the the FOMO that the fear of missing out it, it, it pervades society. You know, the and there are a lot of parents who wear themselves out. Yes. 
participating in stuff because they are afraid their kids are going to miss out on something and they are stressed and strained and worn out all afraid of something that may neither help if if you do it i don't want to say there's not benefit in extracurricular things there is learning to dance playing ball um, learning a musical instrument all of those things can be beneficial but doing all of those things yeah. can be harmful. Can be detrimental. Right. That's yeah, right. To to families, and uh, I say often to young families, and 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 we experience this uh, when our kids were coming along, where there were opportunities for lots of activities. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but we we had a a, a rule in our house that you pick two extracurricular activities this time of year, participate in them. And outside of that, it our free time is going to be family time, you know, and, and do activities, whether it's travel. Go and out. it couldn't be on Sunday or Wednesday. That's exactly <laughs> right. That wasn't even a consideration. Right. And, um, you know, my son in particular, uh, who, who had lots of opportunities for activities, um, had just a little bit of resistance to that on the front end, just the message of it, you know, like he was going to miss out on something. But he actually uh, came to us at the end of summer and thanked us for that because he realized the time that we were able to have together and the activity we had as a family that we never otherwise would have had. And I tell people, don't mistake busyness for quality time. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's a misconception oftentimes. But you're right. I see parents and families who are frazzled. They're physically, emotionally, financially mm -hmm. drained because they're afraid they're going to miss out. But they want to be like everybody else. Yeah. So he goes on to say in verse 11, he says, Say to those who worship other gods, your so-called gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. So he's confronting people who are worshiping other gods. How should you confront people who have false gods? What, what's, what's the process of doing that? And I, I mean, I don't mind going first. For me, obviously, a big part of my callings and giftings, at least I believe, is to preach. And so the greatest opportunity I have to speak to people about those things is more broad. Sure. This is what the Bible says. This is what you should be doing. Um, and I don't mind confronting, it, particularly in broad concepts and to big groups of people, the the ideas of things whether it obviously I'm talking about you know fear of missing out we're we're addressing a lot of people who are listening yeah. to this but the you know how do you address people who who worship false gods what how, what's the approach a lot of it uh, I think depends on relationship and how connected you are to people I, I think the thought process of just going around randomly and seeing <laughs> people doing things and getting up in their face and in mm -hmm. their business is not going to not going to end well for you probably um certainly going to be ineffective yeah absolutely very ineffective in fact I, I think it's more detrimental but as opportunities present themselves i think you look for those times and seasons just to to speak to people and say you know uh, this was my story. This is kind of, you know, when we were faced with a similar situation, this is what we dealt with. Some decisions we made either worked or didn't work well. But I think just being sensitive to those opportunities uh, when they come about it is a great way that we need to be on the lookout for those things. Carol, how do you confront people who worship false gods? Um, I think that if you sometimes just having somebody else's opinion from an outside point of view um, can help you see things differently so I think if you're sensitive like Jay said if you have a relationship with that person and you really truly are coming from a point of view that you want to help them you can kind of help them stand back and say like what what are you doing how much good right. is this actually mm -hmm. doing for you or is it destructive because I think it's hard for us to see it when it's become that important to us or something that we're seeking or following or pursuing, we get blinded to reason a lot of times and we may not be able to see it as clearly as somebody from the outside can see it. Yeah, and oftentimes when those opportunities do come and if you if you try to speak into their life, I have found it's not uncommon. You will realize you, you, you're in the right spot. You've hit the nail on the head because they're 
response. Mm -hmm. One of two things typically, most of the time in my experience has been one of two responses is they become very agitated or mm -hmm. aggressive in their response back to you. Right. So you know you, you know that that's the area. Um, or either all of a sudden you can see the light bulb go off and you know the conversation begins to ensue and um, so either way you, you know you're, you're addressing the, the problem at hand. So he goes on to say, but the Lord made the earth by his power and he preserves it by his wisdom with his own understanding he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. I take offense to that. <laughs> I resemble that remark. <laughs> the craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make for their carefully shaped works are a fraud. They, these idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. When you talk to people, and I, this, is a, this is a challenge for pastors in that we don't often get this opportunity. But when you talk to people, who have no concept of God, how do you describe it? I think um, the answer is not always the same. I think it it's based sometimes on, on what you know of that person, what the current circumstance and situation is. You know, if it's a if it's a physical health issue, you know, it, it may be that he is he is creator of these bodies and he's also the, the healer and sustainer. If it's a financial need, it could be that. If it's a relational need, you know, uh, it, it could be that he is the ultimate relationship, et cetera. And so I think it, I think it varies depending on both the person you're talking to and the, the situation. You know, if it's uh, unrest and turmoil, he, he's the God of peace. And so I, I think depending on that, dictate somewhat the response sure and on the other side of that I think that because we live in a world that is constantly changing and sometimes life feels unpredictable something's a good idea one day and the next it's not that it's important to help people see God's truth and his promises and that his word is the truth in our lives and um, then if you really start to spend a lot of time in it you can see that. You can see the one big story that we're talking about. You can start to understand how it relates to you and that a lot of the things you see that's lacking in the world are the things that you'll find in right. his word. Truth. Yeah, I, I think sometimes you have to relate to people where they are in a way that they understand so they can let their guard down. There's a guy I'm friends with on Facebook. He's an atheist. And he will occasionally insert himself under a post that and then say something obnoxious and sarcastic. And yesterday, well, the day before recording this, I'd made a post and he posted something really sarcastic among a bunch of serious comments. And um, it was it was he was just making fun of people who trusted in God and basically he said God is uh, people use God who, uh, to cope with life that can't figure life out themselves and I, I responded back and I said to him I'll be praying that you can cope and he said I don't I don't need prayer to cope he said I use common sense and reason and my <laughs> responded back to him I said if you're trying to argue about God on Facebook, common sense and reason is yeah. already <laughs> left yeah, the room. You miss that. That's right. Yeah. And he just laughed back because I was just being sarcastic like he was. And sometimes you have to, as people sure. speak to you, you have to speak back to them. You, you have be to be relatable. That's right. Yeah. You've got to relate on their on their level. Any other pieces to this that you um, see um, that speaks to you? And the one thing that, that resonates throughout this entire passage that, that we read through was his emphasis, the writer's emphasis on the idols. 
-hmm. they were they were human made in every form where they cut the trees down they, the, the silver the gold they hammered out and they nailed them up so they wouldn't fall down and he's just reiterating the absolute absurdity of yeah why are you worshiping something that's you've it. made that's yeah. exactly right, right. Mm -hmm. exactly which is like everything in our Amazon cart. <laughs> there you go. We worship what we make. Yes. We don't even make it. Yes, it is. Somebody, somebody else made it. Somebody, somebody made it. Yeah. yeah. But I think he's referring to also, you know, just the time and effort that we put into those right. things. Mm -hmm. The things, like mm -hmm. physical things that we're looking for. Or so want. enamored with. Yes, that's right. Agreed. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us today that our efforts to make gods always fails and our efforts to um, emulate what other people are doing are usually short-sighted and unwise. I pray that you would give us the understanding to worship you, the true creator, the one God that we do should fear and honor and serve. May we um, be intentional about that today in Jesus' name. Amen.